Hey, what's good, fam? Welcome to another episode of the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast. There's and Jeff coming to you from Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we've got the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Rachel Hesselbrock, owner and founder of Alinea Health. Claps, slow golf claps. Crushed That's it. how you do it? Crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> he got the name right, which yeah. I'm very thankful for. Hey, you know, professionalism is a courtesy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Apparently, it's hard to say, so. Really? Oh. Well, try having your name spelled with a Y. People church that shit up all the time. <laughs> really? What? My cow. Yeah. Yeah. Me cow. <laughs> Interesting. I'm like, man. When just, I first saw it, I was kind of like, me cow? Michael. No, I was just like, <laughs> it's Michael. That's got to be. I let, I let people suffer through it. Like, if they're brave enough to just, like, yeah, yeah. test it in front of me, I just let it ride for at least five attempts. Like, see what happens with yeah. it. I'm with like, it. are you just going to, like, give up the ghost and just be like, it's got to be Michael. Yeah. Right, it's got to be yeah. something, you know? right? <laughs> um, Darwin told me Durs. I was yeah. like, who the? All right, great. So, you know, most people are introduced to me that way. Mm -hmm. And then when they find out my name is Michael through somebody else, they're like, who the hell are you talking right. about? You know, mm -hmm. uh, but no, uh, Darwin, uh, a good friend and, and member at the gym linked us up. He said that uh, there was definitely a lot of, of synergy between what you do, what I do and the method and philosophy with which we do it. Um, and as a doctor of naturopathic medicine, I'm, I'm always interested in uh, your scope of practice mm -hmm. because within the the context of naturopathic medicine you have uh you know a number of of perceptions that are like the the first thing that comes to mind you know everything from acupuncture to essential oils <laughs> to witch doctors mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh as we were having coffee the other day uh we'll dive into this in, in in a little bit um you know you had described what you do as not sexy it's it's tough and it's definitely the long road you know compared to the perception of you know conventional big pharma westernized medicine mm -hmm. and uh to which you know my my immediate question to that is how does the dialogue go when you you reach a level of rapport with a a client and you have to ask them you know like how bad do you really want mm -hmm. to be well? Like how in charge of your life, how responsible, what level of responsibility do you want mm -hmm. for your health and well being? Mm -hmm. You know, so I want to dive into your perspective on how that conversation typically goes and, and what you believe the answer to the answer to that question to actually be. But for everybody who doesn't know who you are, where Alinea came from and how you became a naturopathic doctor or why you chose naturopathic medicine in the first place. Give us the, uh, the cliff notes of where, uh, where you come from and how you got to this point. Sure. Um, so I graduated from ASU 2013, I think it was, um, with a bachelor's in dietetics. And that was super amazing. But after you graduate, they kind of are just like, have fun. So mm -hmm. you really don't know what you're supposed to do. So I knew I wanted to help people, but I didn't exactly know how. So inevitably, I just waited tables and bartended for three years. So I was like, getting people drunk is probably a good idea. <laughs> Let's First do step. that. Yeah, right. Um, so after doing that for three years, just kind of shuffling around, I really got just annoyed with everything. And I wound up at a place that I won't name because they're here in the valley. Uh, but I got a job there. And it was a weight loss company. And the 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 caliber to which they operated was not up to par with my standards on how I think people should be treated in regards to their diet and what should be looked at and this and that. They were very much a business. They were very much um, just trying to push their product on you. And it was, you couldn't deviate from that. You had to sell them this, that, and the other. And it was like, that's not how you, that's not nutrition at mm -hmm. all. That's <clears throat> a boxed meal. That's crap, quite frankly. Sure. Um, and so I was there. And then also at the time I was suffering from uh, migraines. I did Muay Thai, which I told you about. Uh, and I got punched one too many times, I think. And I got whiplash from it, and which resulted in all migraines. So I went to the doctor and I was put on all the medications. And I even had shots at one point And none of that shit worked. And I was like, holy cow, like, what the hell am I going to do? Mm. This sucks. So uh, a good buddy of mine was like, go see my chiropractor. And I was like, what? Like, that is... 
bogus. Like, I don't even think I actually think that works. Um, but I was kind of at my wit's end and I was like, well, I really have nothing else to try. Mm -hmm. So, um, I went in with him, it was six weeks and I was fixed up and I haven't really had a migraine since maybe one or two. So that knowledge that I gained of knowing like, look, you don't have to always take a pill or, uh, do some sort of shot or whatever. And maybe it's a structural issue. And if you just address the structural issue, things will write themselves. Sure. Um, so after all that happened, um, you know, I was just like, this is something cool that I, I think I want to do. And so, uh, my now best friend had posted something on Facebook that she got accepted into Southwest college of naturopathic medicine. And I was like, what the hell is that? Uh, so I asked her about it and she told me about it and I just looked it up online and everything they said online was just right up my alley in regards to ethics and values and everything like that. So I applied and they let me in and then they let me graduate. So <laughs> how long does that course work? Uh, it's four years. Four years. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty extensive. It's med school. Okay. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. I've never even, I've never even heard of that path. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. So with regard, so what is the, I mean, is, I'm going to sound really stupid asking this question, but I'll <laughs> ask it anyway. Um, with regards to uh, your scope of practice, mm -hmm. what is the difference between being a naturopathic doctor mm -hmm. and just being an MD? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so biggest thing is we do not work in hospitals. So any emergency situations, your heart attacks, your loss of limb, your car accidents, your things like that, like, please immediately go to the emergency room. Like mm -hmm. we, um, while we get some emergency medicine training for those instances where you just have to do something in the meantime while you're waiting for the ambulance, um, but big things like that, go to a hospital, we can't do anything sure. until they figure it out. We can help supplement afterwards. Um, Scope. Scope is really, we can pretty much do anything your Western primary care can do. Mm -hmm. So we can prescribe you medications. Um, we can do minor surgical procedures. It's pretty equivalent except for that whole emergency piece of it. Right. And also we're not allowed in hospitals um, or typically like a Western medical office. Sure. They don't really like us. Okay. So... so <clears throat> I, and I find I find that extremely interesting because <clears throat> I, I look at what you you're the the conflict the line in the sand between naturopaths and 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 westernized medicine mm -hmm. the same way like the the way the argument goes the same way I look at the argument between CrossFit and bodybuilding you know what I mean <laughs> like mm -hmm. does it really need to be mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. We don't think so. No. People that are um, aware get it, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it seems like it's an it's it's simply <laughs> just an industry thing. <clears throat> you are now in a a category that poses competition. Mm -hmm. Is is my would be my perspective on that whole conversation. Totally, I think I'm with you on that. I think it's completely unnecessary. I think all doctors go into medicine because they want to help people in some mm. way, shape or form. And I think it has now just become us versus them. Right. Um, and I think that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, there are some things that, you know, MDs will do that. I'm like, God, please go there. Like they're going to help you do this sure. while there are other things that I can do that are different than them. And we both can achieve the same result. So right. I think unfortunately the people who, are the loudest in our industries are the ones who are making it seem like it's this huge, big ordeal. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually hate us. I hope not. Like, right. We just care and we just want to help people get better. Mm -hmm. That's really all it is. But sure. Know. What initially got you started in like the <coughs> health and wellness space, you know, going, taking dietetics and then, you know, eventually finding your chiropractor and getting into what you're doing with naturopathic. Now, what led you down that that route? Did you have a, you know, athletic background growing up or? What a great question. I actually have never thought about that. Um, shoo -wee, what led me? I, <laughs> I don't even know. So I moved here from Ohio when mm. I was 20 and I moved in with my mom 
And my mom was at that time taking classes at a community college in dietetics. Okay. And I went to some college in Cincinnati and it was very, <laughs> I started out in nursing and there was a huge ass waiting list and I was like, no. Um, and the, so I switched to EMT and I got certified as an EMT and I tried to get a job. They don't like women. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get a job. No one would hire me. Um, and then I went out to be a firefighter and um, before I took the test in Ohio, I moved out here. And so I took the firefighter test here, got an interview. It went fucking terrible. It was really, really bad. If anybody does a fire interview, like you guys are amazing. Um, it's really, it's really <laughs> hard. What's it's so hard about it? So I'm very <laughs> bubbly, I okay. guess you yeah. could say. Yeah. I'm very like. <laughs> hi, how are you? Like, sure. you guys are great, whatever. And it's just five people just mean mugging you and just staring <laughs> at you. And they're like, what do you bring to a team? Mm, panel style. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh God, I don't know. Like, you know, I just, <laughs> I wasn't prepared at all. It was horrible. So if anybody goes through that, you guys are amazing. Um, so that was that. Um, shoot, where was I? I don't remember. Your path to naturopath. Yeah, I know, but you tried out for you uh, well, did your fire interview. Yeah, yeah. So that didn't work out. So then my mom was taking these classes in nutrition, and I actually just started like flipping through one of her textbooks, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Holy shit, this is cool!" Like, I like how things work. I like knowing like the pathways that food goes through when it goes through the body, and mm -hmm. your fats, and your carbs, and your protein, like all that. Like, it was just super, super interesting to me. Um, and so I really was like, "Wow, well, there's." I don't know what else I'm going to do. Yeah. So I kind of just started taking classes and it, it stuck and it worked out and it was really fun. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's cool how you can just stumble upon those things. Just yeah. like, it seems like happenstance, but it's like, I don't know if you believe in the universe oh, or whatever, totally. but it's like pushing you totally. in that direction. It's totally. pretty wild because just to read a textbook and just to latch onto that, yeah. you know, it's pretty interesting how that happens. It was pretty neat. I was thankful because I was like, great. Now I actually yeah. have something to like work towards and mm -hmm. nobody will interview me at the end. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Just like I'm good. No, I know, no right? five panel interview there to get this happening. And there was minimal math, which was also good. So I was like, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that makes it so much as, better. As far as your now that you're off on your own with Alinea, uh, how has that journey been up to this point? <laughs> I love the hand clap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because him and Darwin are the only two people who have said it right. You don't understand. Like I'm and super it, sensitive like, to that shit. Yeah, um, <laughs> I can't stand it when people mispronounce stuff. It's terrible. Um, what was the question? Sorry. What has it been like? Yeah. Ooh. Um, the the entrepreneurial journey, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. It's been good and terrible simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so like. Uh, in school, we get very minimal business class, mm -hmm. which sucks. I didn't get any, so at least you had Fair some. enough, yeah. Well, mm. <laughs> we're not going to go into that. <laughs> but um, they tried, with quotation marks sure. on that. Um, so, um, you know, I sort of had this idealistic thought in my head that when I got out, people were just going to be like at the door, like, yeah, she's so amazing. I got to work with her. I want to work with her. She's amazing. <laughs> and I am amazing and you should work with me, but also that's not life. And that was a huge, not slap in the face, but I was like, holy shit, we're all the people. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Yeah. Um, so getting patience is, is, is hard. Uh, in the sense that not everybody is on the same wavelength in right. regards to health and how they think it should be handled and this and that. Um, but the actual building of the business has been super cool and super just, I don't even know. I'm just grateful for it. Like yeah. mm. I got the opportunity to try something that, you know, no one else in my family has really tried. And it's been mm -hmm. super cool just to be like, I don't think I can do that. And then you do it and you're like, Oh shit, I did it. Yeah. Mm. That's super cool. Um, or when somebody like, you know, you give someone your card and they call you and like, I really liked you. I really want to work with you. You're like, holy shit, that's super cool. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Right. So, um, but definitely challenging times. I'm sure you're aware. Like you just kind of think to yourself, like, I literally have no idea what I'm doing or how to make this happen. Sure. You just, I don't know. I just kind of roll with it. And yeah. Yeah. What happens happens. I mean, that's literally all you can do. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you go about landing your first patient? Was it? You know, just knocking on people's door like, hey, here's my card. Or no. was it ads? How did how'd that work out no. when you finally landed that? Oh, my God. 
<laughs> so I'm not going to tell you the whole story. Okay. Um, but I was actually covering at a clinic for um, a couple of my friends who were out of town. They're really good friends. And so they asked me to cover their clinic. And so she came in and just, you know, had a bunch of stuff she wanted to talk about. And so we sat and we talked about it. And that, that was that. I don't even know if you knew the rest of the story, you would crack up. But um, yeah, I don't know. That's literally how it happened. And then after that was just sort of word of mouth building after that point. Yep. Um, I, you know, sometimes I'll just like I'm very much if I see someone I want to work with, I'll I'll say, look, I really want to work with you because I mm -hmm. think we'd be a good fit and a good team. And um, I know I could make some sort of impact in your life. So yeah. if you're like when if you're ready, let me know and I'll give them a card. Um, and I've gotten a few people <coughs> who've called me from that, which is super cool. That's dope. Yeah. And when did, when do you reach like your bandwidth? Do you, did, have you reached that point yet <laughs> or like no. for your, just like for one doctor taking care of all these clients? What, and what it will be, what would be that bandwidth point for you? Um, honestly, I don't know. Don't know yet. So mm. I don't know how it is for you or for you, but like you always try to take on more than, you know, exactly you're actually right. capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm worried that the point will come to where people are like, let me in, let me in, let me in. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, this is too, it's a lot. Um, so hopefully a lot, yeah. <laughs> right. you know, Absolutely. so I can, you know, do what I love to do and mm. help people and uh, make their lives amazing. Um, but I don't have an answer for you on that. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I, I, I was just thinking, like, when you're taking all these patients, you're dealing with, you know, their personal problem. Yep. And then, like. When do you know, especially opening your own clinic, it's clinic, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that, when do you know when to hire staff and start, you know, growing the company beyond yourself? I think that's always the toughest part of being an entrepreneur. Like totally. you said, we take on so much totally. right. that there comes a point where you finally look at the, yourself and like, man, there's no, I can't handle it yeah. anymore. Right. I need some, I yeah. need some damn help. Yeah. And you know, I'm excited for that day. Yeah. In all honesty, like I would really like to grow the company into something that is, a great for everybody who lives here mm -hmm. um so they have access to good health care and then also to like helpful to other naturopathic doctors mm -hmm. like there are not a huge amount of opportunities around for us that are actually really good opportunities um and a lot of the times people wind up going on their own because the opportunities just aren't there not what they mm -hmm. want so i'm hoping to really like just grow it into this thing where I can bring people on and give them a great starting salary or great uh, independent contractor mm -hmm. contract, whatever, like, and just kind of help the whole community and I don't know, make there it go. awesome. Well, you're also the way your business model is structured from the way I understand it is you're uh, kind of in that, that early adopter pool of the way that the circles that Jeff and I run in, we all see medicine going, mm -hmm. you know, away from, you know, like the, the big hospitals will be where, you know, the the, the terminally ill, mm -hmm. the uh the the trauma the, the trauma stuff gets taken care of. But you know, as as time goes on, people are starting to gravitate more and more and more to this this concierge I want a relationship with my doctor, mm -hmm. not the um uh uh you know, the, the 10 minute consult mm -hmm. and then the, the PA takes care of me the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so the, the, the fact that you're, you're on that path, I mean, <coughs> we all see it coming, mm -hmm. you know, so, awesome. uh, you know, kudos to you for recognizing that as a, uh, legitimate business model. Thank you. And, uh, as, as retro as it sounds, the way I described it, it's actually the way that, you know, it actually mm -hmm. should be. Mm -hmm. You know. Which is why I started in the first place. Mm -hmm. I didn't start it because I was trying to be some sort of new up and coming whatever. Like, right. uh, what's important to me is that I have a conversation with you and that we get to know each other and that mm -hmm. I know about your friends and family and your dogs and all that. Like, I want us to be on that level so that when stuff comes up, right. we can deal with all of it and not mm -hmm. just one little piece of it, which is how it's dealt with now. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, yeah. Hmm. I was just trying to do what I love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was it. That, that's the cool part because I remember, you know, you mentioned how you found it through chiropractic. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, you remember, the, I call them the Hannibal Lecters, where you put these cages on your head and you hang the weight from it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you, yeah. you do for the to traps. Build, yeah, to build your neck. Mm -hmm. But I put so much weight on it that I, 
<laughs> you know, the curvature of your neck, yeah. I guess oh, it's supposed yeah. to go Pick in. Your shit out of whack. Dude, yeah. it threw it the opposite direction. <laughs> so I had these migraines that were excruciating, only on the left side of my head. So uh-huh. they, I got diagnosed with cluster cluster yeah. migraines. Yeah. Or something. Uh-huh. yeah. And I couldn't get it resolved. Like, I'd go to the doctor, hey, how do you get it fixed? And I've you know, never heard this story no, before. You're, dude, you're an idiot. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's, that's why I was such a banger. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so it threw me off. And I was like, man, I had these terrible headaches, cluster mm-hmm. headaches, man. And I was like, none of the doctors I went to could find a solution, whatever. Sure. Then I got, I was in my, my anatomy class with Coach Bryant. And okay. he's like, you know what, Jeff? Try, um, try going to a chiropractor. He's like, when I went, when I went, he's like, all of my sinus infection or whatever, all my clogged nose went away immediately after like, I got my back corrected because mm-hmm. if your spine's in alignment, sure. you know your body heals itself is what he right, was telling me. Right. I was okay, I'll give it a shot. You know, lo and behold, I did. Went to the chiropractor and got my back aligned and yeah. everything, the headaches and everything went away. And from there, I saw like, this is the way, man. I was like, I didn't understand why it worked mm-hmm. yet because right. I was still so young and mm-hmm. it was like the first time experiencing that. Yeah. But seeing how a traditional doctor that's a you know, take a pill, call me in the morning, whatever, didn't work. And then going to a chiropractor where they actually resolved the problem and taught you how to correct it yourself, mm-hmm. that changed my life. And from yeah. there, I don't even take, like, ibuprofen and stuff. Oh, really? but like, yeah, because, you know, it's like the traditional medicine, you see it's everything is just like, like you said, write a prescription, get the hell out of the office. But then going to the chiropractic or naturopathic, it's just like they're actually there to help you not come back to their mm-hmm. office, so to speak. You know, heal right. yourself and to get things going. That's literally the goal. Yeah. It's to like not ever see you again after you're better. And that's why I see that. That's like, that's where I love is because you can, you can tell like people like yourself, you truly care about the patient. You're not just trying to, you know, extract dollars from them and have them coming back day after day after day, week after week. And that's why I love the path that you're going on. Like there was mentioned, like people in this community see that path happening. It's just so interesting how like, you know, the big pharma, Mm -hmm. they just have so much money to make make the change because mm-hmm. their voice is with the dollars but right yeah man i just think it's fantastic what you're doing because literally that changed my life as far as like my thought process when it came to medicine totally you know same for me yeah it's, it's just interesting how that you know the world's collided at that point yeah i guess i don't really have a question back based yeah. off that it was just like a story that i had yeah it just came to my mind i haven't I'm thought glad about you that, in found years. that that's awesome yeah i yeah. haven't thought about that in years but that's amazing that you found that path yeah well, that's I'll, cool i'll tell you we we talked about this over coffee the other day <coughs> You know, as I, uh, you know, continue to pursue uh, my VA disability, mm. right, uh, I go into these docs looking the way that I look. And uh, then they, they do their assessments and they're like, wow, your knee is a fucking mess. Mm-hmm. Your mm. back is terrible. Like, how are you upright? Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, I tell them about the way I train, the frequency I train, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I give them my credentials. Like, I feel like that's extremely important in talking to these these professionals because it's like, you know, oh, he's not just some dumb Marine. You know what I mean? Like, there's some, I would like them to think that there's some intelligence behind it, right? Uh, But they're like, you, the the first thing out of their mouth from a diagnostic standpoint is stop training, cease all training. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I think it's common knowledge amongst us, right, that should movement stop, all of these issues get worse. Yes. Right? That's literally what happens. 100%. Yeah. You know, so the fact that, like, I go see, you know, these, these conventional medical doctors, I mean, it's, it's part of the process I have to. You know, I couldn't go see somebody like you and have you sign off on a diagnosis for a disability rating. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't valid that they don't find that your opinion valid mm-hmm. mm. um which i think is a travesty um <clears throat> but in having these conversations it's like how does where is your side of the house with getting the greater population to understand that what we do in the fitness community not just crossfit exclusively is indeed preventative medicine mm. Like how do you, how do you bring how are you how are you guys as legitimate medical professionals bringing that to the forefront considering the fact that almost fifty percent of America is borderline obese yeah. and you know the the system the epidemic of ill health that is yeah plaguing our country um, it's hard I'm gonna be honest yeah because a lot of it like you said before we started is 
um, the patient taking responsibility for what is happening as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I could talk somebody's ear off till I'm blue in the face, mm -hmm. but if they're like, oh, I'm just going to go get this drug, they just want that quick, you know, they're taking care of it, they're handling, okay, that's on you then, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people get, people get, hmm. Um, not everybody, but they get attached to their doctors okay. who they've had since they were, well, I don't know, 21 or whatever, 18. Um, I hear that a lot. They're like, well, my doctor said this and you're like, okay. And they don't really want to hear anything else. Sure. Um, or they get attached to their diagnosis and they, it's like a, it's like an identity almost for them. It's like, a, yeah, mm. it is interesting. Um, and they have a hard time like giving it up, I guess. And for really? what that reason is, yeah, I don't really know. <clears throat> um, I'd love to do research on There's that. There's a lot of psychology behind that. I yeah. Th well, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, but so, so, but for people like you who we get to sit and chat with, and you guys are awesome because you're on board, and I'm not saying everybody needs to be on board, but you kind of get it and mm -hmm. where it's going. And I think um, we're just trying to explain and teach simultaneously about different ways that can treat somebody with pain or who has diabetes or whatever that doesn't involve a medication. Right. You know what I mean? So diabetes, for instance, uh, type two is completely a lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not your pancreas didn't just all of a sudden decide to stop working one day. Like you, it's, you did it and people that sucks to hear, right? Like, right. man, I just gave myself this horrible disease. Like shoot, mm -hmm. no good. Um, so if they can accept that fact, literally all you got to do, change your diet, exercise, good to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. totally reversible. Sure. So just trying to educate people on that instead of just, here's a pill, mm -hmm. good day. And I'm not saying medication is not important. It totally is. We've all used it at one point or another, mm -hmm. um, does a job great, but also for a lot of the things that are coming up for us, it's not just about that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, right. I feel like there's, um, <clears throat> you know, with that, the identity that comes with diagnosis also comes an over-reliance on medication, mm -hmm. which just like uh, in the gym, when I tell people that, you know, uh, to do their best not to train with belts, not to train with knee sleeves, not to train with mm -hmm. grips, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because all of those things, helpful as they may be over the long term, can become a crutch. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're not actually, we'll just use the weight belt, for example. You're not helping your body uh, adequately create into thoracic yeah. pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not bracing, you're not creating a strong enough core. Now you're core have become accustomed to pushing against mm -hmm. an external influence as opposed to doing its job. Mm -hmm. So then in the event that you don't have the crutch and then you ask your body to do what it's supposed to do, yep. you come up short. Can't do mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I feel like what you're talking about is that exact same ph phenomenon from a medical and a prescription standpoint. Yeah, totally. And have you seen a certain demographic sort of latch onto the idea of you know, naturopathic medicine, like the younger age coming up or athletes. Is it a millennial thing? You know, because <laughs> I think they're the mo more open-minded, it, it would seem. I know I could be off. I think the bigger argument is who are millennials anyways? <laughs> what year to what year? I still haven't figured that out. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who? Yeah, who's, who is latching on to your school of thought and your Definitely practice? the people who... From what I've seen, the people who are into health and fitness already to begin with, such as yourselves, mm -hmm. because they make it a point to uh, educate themselves on what it is that's going on and how can I get better at this and that. Um, and then weirdly, not <laughs> parents of ch younger children, uh, but for the children. Oh, mm, yeah, okay. sure. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. So, like, the parents are like, I'm not wearing any deodorant that has aluminum in it, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeding my kid all organic, and no they're not getting any milk, no vaccinations, yeah, none of it. Um, but then you look at them, and it's, <laughs> they'll do everything for their child, but they sure. have a really hard time doing it for themselves. Mm -hmm. So, oddly enough, that's what I've seen. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. 
what do you think causes that? Do you think it's sort of like, I guess they, they said generationally we get weaker as, you know, especially men, like our dads are stronger than us, vice, you know, on and on. They said, because your parents want you to have a better life than they experienced. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's sort of like the thought process that goes into that, even though they might not completely agree with the idea for themselves, they want their, gen the next generation to live better than they lived, for instance. Yes. What you just said right there, though, it is confusing to me because if you want, if you think that what you're doing for your child is going to make them stronger and better, it will obviously have the same effect for you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I know so exactly what you mean. Yeah. That was interesting that you said that. I never thought about that. Um, what was the question? Sorry. What? I guess, uh, yeah. <laughs> why, why would uh, Why would you think they would latch onto that idea and help you the know, kids? Help the kids instead of like, I you think, know, accepting it themselves. I think just like you said, and I also just think. You know, um, I don't know how old you guys are, but I grew up in Ohio and it was meat and potatoes and box macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. and uh, skyline and like all this horrible food. Um, and that's just what you grew up on. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm like my dad, I don't think knew any better. Right. If he did. He, OK. Yeah. I don't know that. But um, I think people just kind of do the best that they can. Um, and I think also it's like it's just habit. Mm. it's habit to go through a drive through or it's habit to drink your diet Coke because you've been drinking it so long or it, you know, it's habit to do it for yourself. But if you can control it for somebody else, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to do that, to tell your kid like you're eating your broccoli before you get any sort of anything else. So, mm -hmm. but you eating the broccoli on the other hand, you'd have to have some sort of willpower to get it in there. And then right. also realize like, look, this isn't a punishment. Mm -hmm. Right. You right. know, so, yeah, habit, I think. That's interesting. Are you still, and I know you mentioned you did more Thai, right? Yeah. Are you still practicing that? I try. <laughs> really? I don't let people punch me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I do the, I do it's the. It's not good to show up to work with a bruised eye. <laughs> <laughs> not even that. I'm just, you know, the whole neck situation. Yeah. I'm a little freaked out about that because I'm only 31 and okay. still have neck issues. I'm like, geez. Um, but I do the pads and I do the bags and I'll do a class and it's fun to just punch and kick something. How's that helped you in your career and everything? Cause that's like, that sport is, you know, mental mastery and, you know, physical mastery as well. Like how has that helped you as a person? Okay. Honestly, um, when I was doing it, I was a very, uh, insecure person is the only way I can, mm -hmm. uh, address myself as, and it was very like, I had to hit harder and I had to train harder and I had just had this front of like, I'm awesome and amazing and this and that and getting beat and getting punched was like a really hard thing for me to take. Mm. I like really beat myself up about it. Um, so it's helped me to realize like, I don't want to be that person. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I was very, why am I not good enough? Why am I getting punched in the face? Why is this happening? Existential, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so it really just helped me kind of like looking back on it, just be like, man, I was pretty cool back then too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it didn't have to be what it was. So if I had a chance to redo it, I would do it completely different in all honesty really? with the training and the, yeah, the attitude and all that. Mm. But so. it, it seems like there's always like a, not always, but a direct carryover in your case, like how it, the, you know, the, the symbolism of getting punched in the face has carried over to, you know, starting your own practice. And essentially, you're not really getting punched in the face every day, but, <laughs> kind of. you know, Figured. but it, it is like that figuratively yeah. you are taking those shots. Yeah. Sure. You know, honestly, I never thought about that. What a great, what did that be? Analogy? That's an analogy. Yeah, yeah. analogy. Yeah. What a great analogy. It's analogous. Yeah. Cause it's it funny is. cause a lot of them like mixed martial arts guys, we talked to Doug Larson, mm -hmm. your brother. Yep. You know, yourself, doctor. And it's like people who have taken that, that martial arts background, I don't know if it, if they're more in tuned, I guess you would say, but they've exposed themselves to different stressors that most people aren't used to mm -hmm. or comfortable exposing mm -hmm. themselves to, like yeah. physical altercation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're comfortable in that zone where if it happens, I'm good to take it there, but I don't necessarily want to take yeah. it that route. And it, tr it manifests in all stations of their life, sure. I've noticed. Yeah. Well, you I mean, you could, you could take it one step further and, you know, in, in the case, you've learned to t take, accept, and rebound from loss on your own, mm -hmm. as it, which isn't necessarily uh, a lesson 
readily available mm -hmm. in team sports because mm -hmm. yeah. there's if you really wanted to, you could blame it on everybody else, sure. right? Yeah. It's sure. not all your fault. Mm -hmm. But when it's just you and somebody else, mano y mano, well, guess what? Yeah. Either you win, yeah. either you won or you didn't. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that propagates a different kind of reflex to adversity. Yes. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. I would agree with you. Yeah. It took me a long time to learn that lesson. Mm-hmm. But I learned it, which I'm yeah, thankful for. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, at least at least you learned it. Yeah. True. You know. Yes. Um, the uh, uh, the good you gotta take the the good with the bad, and you know, on when you're in the moment, you know, a lot of the bad it's seems awful. so much <laughs> longer <laughs> than, than you're the good. literally dying. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so that, that I think that that's extremely awesome, and and going back to your practice. Uh, and the 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 element of psychology, mm. uh, the the discovery of a person's why, mm -hmm. you know, when mm -hmm. you're taking somebody in that transition from I've taken all the pills, I've tried all the fucking diets, and none of it's working, mm -hmm. right? Where do some of the instruments or like how does the conversation go when you're trying to make that that psychological leap of of responsibility? Mm -hmm. How does the conversation go? Um, fortunately for me, pretty easily. Sure. Um, you seem very direct. Yeah. So I don't see like yeah. that barrier being there for you. No. But because um, I think it's super important because I've gone through my own shit. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't done that and all the work that I did, I would not be where I am today. I know that. Sure. So I think it's super important for people to have a why or to figure out what is causing you to eat, you know, McDonald's 10 times a day, whatever the case may be. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, the conversation is basically, what are your concerns? What do you want to address? Um, and it's not necessarily, people don't necessarily go, I want to address my anxiety or depression or whatever. It's n Sometimes it's that, but sometimes not. Um, and I don't really force the issue, I guess you could say, but I do ask questions. Mm -hmm. And I think the more interest you show in people, the more willing they're open to up about things. Sure. And then you can get to that area. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily, I'm not a psychologist and you are only here to talk about this. Right. It's a, a more well-rounded sort of like, mm -hmm. oh, like what's going on with that? Tell me about that. Sure. And then they give you some story and then you just, oh, well, what was that like? Like, tell me about that. So Honestly, if you just show interest, it's really not that hard for people to just open up. Right. And then you can, you know, your third party, you can point things out like, hey, have you noticed how this correlates to this? And like when you do this, also this happens. Have you ever like noticed that? And once you bring it to their attention, they're like, oh. Yeah. You're connecting the yeah. dots. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. fun. So. Sure. Yeah. The, uh, in your, your path to this point, what are some of the instances or the instance that made you conscious of your ability to develop rapport? Mm -hmm. Because what you just talked about is not innate for most people, right? That, that character trait of getting somebody to, to like and trust you and be, natu be genuinely interested and inquisitive, like, that's extremely important to what you do, mm -hmm. but how is that part of your being? Mm. <laughs> that's so weird to me that it's not, and you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, people say that to me all the time. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way people don't care, not care that much, but oh, I guess that's true. I know. <laughs> I, I would be, I guess. Um, okay. So <clears throat> when I was going through all my shit, Mm -hmm. And trying to figure myself out. I was a very the, the headache part. No, or no, what no, else? no. The like my fucked upness. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so <clears throat> tell us the story. Oh no, I'll try to make it short. I feel like I'm no, talking man, a lot. Go for no, it. Go um, for it. You're so, supposed to talk. I know. Uh, when I was younger, childhood was not the greatest. Mm -hmm. um, mom left when I was five. Dad raised me with my brother. Um, dad was always at work, so it was really like nobody home. There was my mom wasn't around. You know what I mean? It all just really got to me. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have an avenue to express that. My family is very much don't uh, uh, just don't bring it up. 
just ignore it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't talk about it. Don't do anything. Don't say anything. Like, you might start something. Like, they're very like that. And I love my family to death, but they are. And so um, it was like I had so much built up resentment and so much anger towards all the shit that happened in my life. But I didn't know how to properly, like, explain it to somebody or be vulnerable enough to say, look, like, this really hurt me and it really sucked. Like, yeah. can we have a conversation about it? So I never developed those skills. Um, and so part of the reason I started Muay Thai was because purely uh, compensatory mechanism to where... I don't feel tough enough, so I'm going to go do something tough, and then mm -hmm. I'll be, like, invincible and impenetrable, and nothing will get to me sort of thing. Right. So I did that, and then I got into med school, and it was like, oh, I'm so, I, like, I got to be smart. I got into med school, and this and that. And then you, you do these things, and then you still feel like shit. Mm. <laughs> like, nothing, nothing worked. Right. It was like, man, I just still feel like a piece of shit, right. you know? Um, and so... Luckily, I found this amazing doctor. His name's Dr. Moshe. He's in Canada. Hey, bud. Um, he really helped me through all that and kind of the <laughs> kind of just threw me into the deep end um, with trying to figure all of it out. But um, working with him really helped me kind of just figure everything out. And so I guess the continuing to feel like shit and then taking like noting that like clearly you saying, hey, and being a friend of me is not making me feel any better. So I got to like work on something else internally and figure out what's going on. Right. And after I kind of did that, I fucking Pinterest, I read this quote on Pinterest and it just <laughs> said, I know everybody's laughing, but it's so true. It's one of those like, Wah. Um, but it just said, be who you needed when you were younger. And literally all I needed when I was younger was That's for heavy. somebody to talk to me yeah. and like, be like, tell me how you're feeling. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Do you see how this is doing this or what? You know what I mean? Just yeah. someone to understand. I didn't sure. have that. So let's literally all I want to do for people now is just be like, oh, tell me about that. That really sucks. Like mm -hmm. what's going on with that or whatever. Sure. So I guess that's how it. Rock on. Came that's really interesting. That's, in, that's I really want, interesting. I want to know about your experience with Dr. Moshe. I'm apparently a very interesting person. Yeah. This is great. No one's ever I seen I mean, that. you don't suck. That's why you're sitting <laughs> on this couch. <laughs> so. yeah. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dr. Moshe helped you fix that part. You know you did. don't suck anymore, so yes. that's good. Yes. Props to Dr. Moshe. Uh, he's amazing. Tell us about that. Like, what, what did you guys work on for you, you know, since so, so much of that is in internally self-perception uh, -huh. uh negative self-talk uh -huh. lack of affirmation uh -huh. all of those things um you know is he a naturopath he is a naturopath okay yes okay so he <laughs> fuck this is a lot so he came to the school deep and dope it is I, I like it i like it Good. he came to the school and i was a student i think i was uh, first year second okay. year something mm -hmm. like that and I would literally, seriously, guys, get hundreds on tests. And I'd be like, I should have done better. Like, how the fuck can you do better <laughs> if you got 100 on a test? That makes zero sense. It's stupid. So um, somebody sent out an email like, hey, this Dr. Moshe is coming in. He needs a student um, to demonstrate how he does his style of counseling on them. And I was like, mm, maybe I should do it. So I signed up for it. Um, and so I had previously been diagnosed with body dysmorphic disorder. Sure. You guys know what it is? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Bodybuilders. Fair enough. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I was previously diagnosed with that. So I told them, like, this is what I've been diagnosed with. Uh, this is what I'm trying to figure out, so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. so in front of, like, I don't know. To cut you off real quick. Yeah, go. What end of the spectrum were you on? Were you self-perceptually too big or too skinny? Too big. Okay. Yeah. Go. Um, so I sat down with him in front of like, I don't know, fucking 150 people or something Ooh. like that. Yeah, like everybody showed up to this thing and it's fucked up because nobody ever showed up to most of the other club <laughs> shit. And I was like, <laughs> what is happening right now? And so that was really hard. But so he sat there with me and he just asked questions. And he asked the right questions. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you exactly what those questions were. Right. But he very much connected <clears throat> the dots for me. And he very much made me go to a level that was 
much deeper and much more self-aware than yeah. I don't look like a model on TV mm. or whatever the fucking case may be. Yeah. You know what I mean? My ass is too small or whatever. Um, and so he helped me just to really reflect on where everything came from. Mm. And once I was able to make those associations, it was like, okay, I do this because this happened. How can I reroute and handle it a different way? And mm. so I would literally explode in people's faces. I would get in their faces and I would yell at them and I would say mean things like I didn't care. Wow. I just wanted to like hurt people basically is where it was coming from. Mm. So he just, it was a lot of um, just talk like that, you know? Yeah. Um, he also used homeopathy. I don't know if you guys know what that no, is. Oh, it's a very long, another very long story. Homeopathy, um, super safe, super simple, effective medicine. Uh, very individualized so there are like i don't know three four hundred remedies that you could pick from okay. and they all have a very distinct set of symptoms sure and so the remedies are given based off of how one would present with symptoms so Got it's it. not just like i'm angry and they're like here's a xanax right it's very much more in depth much more involved mm -hmm. um so he helped or he used that with me and it, it helped to just kind of like clear the background noise, I guess, kind of shut my mind up a little bit so I could actually see what was going on instead of just making shit up in my head. Right, mm -hmm. right. So um, just that, just a lot of counseling with him and a lot of crying and like, I suck, no, you don't. Like, you know, just going back and forth and just mm -hmm. working through it. Yeah. So yeah. How long did that process take to finally, or is it still an ongoing process, but the initial yeah. discovery of that? Mm, I would say a good two, okay. Um, until I started to feel better, maybe um, probably six months to a year. Because mm. um, it's not easy to go from a lifetime of like thoughts and beliefs and this and that to right. something completely different. Like mm -hmm. you really have to stand there and face your shit and that's yeah. scary. Um, so for me, it was like six months to a year. And then Every once in a while, still like it's still an ongoing thing. Like shit will right. creep back up. Like especially with the business, I'm like, what am I? Why do I even do this? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. who am I? I'm nobody. I'm from right. Ohio. Like they don't do anything. Um, no offense over there. <laughs> 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 um, Max is like, go act. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, every once in a while, I'll still just give him a ring, and I'm like, "This is happening. I don't know what's going on." And he'll just he just asks questions, and he helps me walk through it. And it's like, ah, okay. So when did he That's make dope. the 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 transition from uh, professor educator in in your life mm -hmm. to mentor? Because that seems like the seat that he sits in right now. He very much so. He, gosh, pretty Im immediately. If I can be honest. Um, and I think he's amazing, but I also think he was the only person ever in my life to really take the time mm. to sit and listen. Mm -hmm. And I know that's what I was paying him for. Sure. But I had been to counselors previously and it was never fucking like that. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? I remember mm -hmm. one session I just literally just sat there out of spite and didn't say a fucking word for an hour. Goodwill hunting style. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I was just like, why am I here? This is mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. Nobody helped me through anything <clears throat> except for him. Yeah. Um, and so after that, and because of the progress I was making, I guess it was maybe like a year or so. Sure. Um, to where I was like, damn, like I want to learn how to do that. Mm. I want to, I want to, I want to be that for other people. Sure. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. So in saying that, what would, how would you define your purpose at this point and, you know, down the road? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Shoo wee. My purpose mm -hmm. in life? In life. Is just to make other people's lives better. To help them get to where they want to go. I don't know. I feel like I'm more of a coach than I am a doctor. There you go. I don't know. I love the medicine, but also I would rather like if you have a goal of something, yeah. even if it's not medicine related, like sure. I want to fucking help you get there mm -hmm. in whatever way I can. So how about that? From from, a, from from a diag from a diagnosis, what's your what's the best way to put this question? Just ask it. What's your favorite mode of treatment? Oof. Like if yeah. you're if your avatar, like the perfect patient, came to see you, <laughs> like 
Is like what? What do you love about treatment? Is it uh, like natural remedies? Is it acupuncture? What, like, what is your what's your, what's your jam? It's like yes. This is totally off what we've been talking about, but like minor surgery. Really? <laughs> yes. What constitutes minor? Um. So anything above the muscular layer. So that would so pulling out thorns. Yep. So suturing, lipomas, abscesses, things like that. And it's because you get to like work with your hands and it's not pretty when you start and then you get to make it pretty. Interesting. That's oh, the last thing I thought she was going to say. I know. I told you it's completely <laughs> off topic. That's interesting. But if someone came to me and like, I have this lump, I'd be like, yes, sit down. <laughs> We're going to fix that. That's how Dr. Pimple got big time. Yeah. I'm telling you. She's awesome. She crushes it. She's that amazing. That shit's gross. She's you think so? Oh, that no. thing, dude, it's relaxing. Just like. I would agree with you. It's soothing to see that. I don't know why. When you see all this shit come out, you're just like, oh. It's so God, purifying. It's you're, yeah. you're both disgusting. Yo, give me a high five on this one, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's so purifying. It's so fun. <laughs> It's Ew. so fun. <laughs> but while they're sitting there, you get to talk with them about their yeah. life and like whatever. You know what I mean? So sure. I don't know. I just like people. I dig it. Yeah. I dig love it. that, though, because the best doctors, you know, even in my time when I blew my knee out, mm -hmm. the best doctor I had, uh, Dr. Jeffrey, uh, he was fantastic, man. But he got to know me as a person, not just sitting there, move your knee, do an ACL test, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. He got to understand, like, my background mm -hmm. as a person and really dive in deep. So by the time I was on the surgery table... It was like I was comfortable. I wasn't yeah. you know, apprehensive about getting totally. cut open. I just woke up and I was like, damn, it's time to get back Good out there job, again. Bud. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. But it's that, you know, the, the social aspect of building that rapport is mm -hmm. super important. I think, yeah. like you're mentioning, a lot of people miss that in mm -hmm. this world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's p part of being a business, business owner, a doctor, mm -hmm. or just a friend, just being there to listen and, you know, well, I think that's, totally. that's, that's, that's the element of the, the deal that as connected as we've become via technology that's where it it, it kind of backfires because we're we're not we're not genuine mm -hmm. we're, we're living in this this microwave of interaction mm -hmm. right where um you know if i don't want to deal i just stop texting yeah you know what i mean or i can create literally my own universe on social media where i only see the good things, the butterflies, mm -hmm. the pretty people, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it, it completely puts the blinders on to the adversity or the negativity that goes actually goes on in the world. And I think that filters into our ability to have honest, authentic, vulnerable totally. conversation, mm -hmm. you know? And I think some of those words have become, you know, uh, um, cliche you know, in, in the here and now, mm -hmm. vulnerability and authenticity and yeah. stuff like that. But it, it's it's still very true. Totally true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would much rather be uncomfortable for five minutes and tell you exactly how I feel mm -hmm. than walk on eggshells or let something great fall apart because things were left unsaid. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And that's how resentment builds, too. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, you don't yeah. get to say <coughs> what you're feeling and then all of a sudden you're pissed off. Right, but now I'm not pissed off. I'm not pushing that anger on you, mm -hmm. who I have issue with. Mm -hmm. Now it's on Jeff. Mm -hmm. It's on mm -hmm. Max. Mm -hmm. Like everybody pisses me off. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Because I didn't have a conversation with you. Yep. Right. Which you know doesn't make any logical sense, but it is indeed the human condition. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I think also too, people those words like genuine and vulnerability they consider it like a weakness. Oh sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was funny because you had said while we were at coffee, you were like something about crying. I don't remember exactly what it was. We were like, I had to learn how to cry or what? You said something about crying. Mm, well, I did. You did. Funny thing. I'm, I'm all about crying. Yeah. I, I am a crier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'm gonna make you cry. Check this shit out. <laughs> this is, this is for, for anybody that, that's walking the entrepreneurial path right now, yeah. go see the greatest showman. Is it gonna make you cry? It's the it's the uh. the musical with Hugh Jackman and yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Zac Efron. Yeah. Okay. I saw the commercials to that shit, and I was like, "That's dumb. Definitely not going to see that shit." <laughs> Nicole's like, "My wife." Yeah. She's like, "You have to see it. You'll love it. It's about P.T. Barnum and how he built the yeah. circus, right?" Bro, I shit you <laughs> not. Fifteen minutes into the movie, it's two and a half hours long. Fifteen minutes in. Waterworks. <laughs> <laughs> Already. What? 
Waterworks. Yeah, and then three more times throughout the shit. Oh, I was yeah. like, man, I know what you're feeling, right? bro. I've been there. <laughs> ah. I need to learn the words of the song. Man. <laughs> man. But, like, I think that it's, it's you know, uh, being able to just allow the things that strike an emotional chord, mm-hmm. you know, to just be. Mm-hmm. Is extremely fucking important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in in my 34-year-old self, I'm way more mature than my 23-year-old self. But, you know, just being able to sit in a movie, you know, either right next to my wife or in a theater full of 100 fucking strangers and be able to just feel whatever I feel, mm-hmm. like, I'm great with that. Totally. And I look back on other experiences prior to you know, the progressive awakening I've had over the years. And I'm just like, God, I would have that same experience and just have like this visceral yeah. reaction to yeah. wanting to cry. And I would, I can remember having like this interior dialogue, like, dude, just cry. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's fucking okay. You know? And it, it's like in the, the, the conscious part of my, my brain, I'm having this discussion with myself, but there's another part of it, this affront that I have this ego that is like, nah, man, don't do that shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, that's, that's not cool. And, you know, as I've improved my circle of influence and been around, uh, you know, the, especially men that are redefining the, what masculine, what it is to be masculine, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I'm completely cool with it. Like, I don't even give a shit anymore. Like, that shit's sad. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I don't cry at like, you know, panda scra- scratching bellies or anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, when, when it strikes a chord, it's cool to let it go. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's healthy. Mm-hmm. You know? It yeah. is healthy. While we're on the, the wellness tip, you know? But uh, that's, that's, you know, still perceived to be in society at large. Uh, it is extremely unappreciated. Mm-hmm. And it's not, and I, I honestly think that, you know, as as a man, you know that when you're you're growing up to be GI Joe and you know playing football and being a Marine and doing all these things, this 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 culture of like aggressive agro mm-hmm. masculinity, mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of that just gets pushed to the back and it's it's not embraced totally. until some really traumatic shit happens, mm-hmm. right? And then you get to see somebody. Uh, what my dad would describe as emotionally naked, mm-hmm. right? That's when you find out the true essence of somebody. You find out what they're really about, mm-hmm. where their breaking point actually is, yeah. you know? And uh, it, if you're okay with being vulnerable, you don't ever have to go that far right. to discover that about yourself. Right. And that's something that can be taught and should be embraced. Yes, I would yeah. agree with you 100%. Very well said. Oh, <laughs> I practiced. Thank on the you way for over. sharing. You did not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. But anyway, I didn't know you yeah, didn't. go see the Greatest Showman because that shit is, it's Done. it's like that for real. Interesting. Yeah. I always click on it. and I'm like ah, and then I pull away from it. <laughs> I don't know why. Me too. I was like ah later. I'll tell you why I clicked on it because it's a musical and we were sitting down for dinner I and I wanted to keep is. my son occupied. He likes music. He likes elephants. Mm. Cool. Done. Next thing I know, he's sitting there eating chips and guacamole and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> crying. Man. Mm. Just blubbering. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm a sobber too. It's perfect. embarrassing. It's <laughs> snot running down yes. your nose. <laughs> Excellent. Grab the tissue. Excellent. It's on. Hits an emotional yeah. trigger. That's yeah, weird. That stuff pops up sometimes, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. But uh, no, I think it, I think it's really cool what you got going on. Um, I, I really enjoy your perspective on the whole deal. Yeah, seriously. You Thank know, because you. you your your approach Thank is you. very much not so mu- uh, very much uh, the the person as a collective. Yeah. You know, not just the body as a system. Yeah. Like, okay, you you're obviously here because you want change. Mm-hmm. But above and beyond that, why do you want to change? You know, and yep. is it is it bad enough for you now mm-hmm. that you'll stick with whatever treatment protocol we decide to come up with? Because, mm-hmm. like you said, when we sat down for coffee the other day, it's not sexy. No, 
It's hard. It is. And it takes a while. It does. You know, what you were talking about, uh, working with your mentor, you know, it's a it was a six to twelve month process mm-hmm. for you to like be consciously all right with yourself. Yep. Like that's the shit that nobody wants to hear. Mm-mm. You know, by the way, for you to get from point A to point B, you're looking at twelve months. Yep. Just so you know. Yeah. Right? And that's a very like that while in the in real time, you know, twelve months goes by like that. Super quick. But in the here and now, yep. it's like, oh my God, that's so far away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so you know, the the fact that you you have the ability to be as direct as you are and still accomplish the monumental task that is developing trust and rapport with somebody, that those two things most of the time in my experience are mutually exclusive Mm. you know people that have your directness in dealing with stranger interaction are like she's a raging bitch Mm. (laughs) he's a fucking asshole Mm. you know what i mean yeah they told me all the things i didn't want to hear and that's not why i came here Mm -hmm. you know but you have the ability to flip that on his head and tell them exactly what the hell is going on and at the same time we're gonna create a relationship totally take we're gonna take this thing the distance we're gonna be friends you know yeah and i think that's massive so i think the the movement that you're on <coughs> you know is only gonna pick up momentum mm-hmm. thank you yeah i appreciate yeah. that so before we let you get out of here i want to ask you two questions Uh-oh. answer them on any level i didn't sign up for this that's what you hear now <laughs> right remember that deep end thing yeah I sh- start swimming Throw them d- oh jeez. Right? <laughs> I hate the ocean too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Right? Sharks. Me too. I'm just saying. That's, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> you were eaten by a shark? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, God, I don't want to hear Have it. Have you seen all the shark memes from the hurricane? No. No, like I don't want to see As tragic them. as all that shit is, like they're creating this like Sharknado uh, scenario. Oh, my like God. Sharks are blowing in. Like <laughs> it's a mess. fucking hilarious on Google. Check it out. There's it's a mess. Lo- all That's kinds terrifying. of memes. But anyway. Okay. Um, Question number one, ask them both and then you can answer. Okay. Uh, first is which is, what do you do each and every day to feed yourself and, and stimulate the, the energy to do what you do on a daily basis? And the follow on to that is, what do you do each and every day to fuel yourself and make sure that that energy is sustainable over the long term? So the thing that I do every day is work <coughs> out easily. Um, I know that if I don't work out, you just feel lazier. I don't know. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So then shit doesn't get done. You're like, oh, man, I didn't get it done. Right. So if I just start and I work out, I'm good to go. Yep. Um, what do I do to fuel? What was the other one? Fuel myself. Mm-hmm. Create that sustainable. To sustain the energy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I envision what it's going to look like when every person is... Uh, aware that they deserve more out of uh, this life. Because mm. I think we settle and I think that's shitty and I think we should all go out and do fucking amazing things. That's good. That's a good one. <laughs> I a, love it. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that that one's no. a damn good one. That's You're massive. <laughs> <laughs> and then where can everybody in this community go follow you and support you and your business and everything that you have going? Uh, you can go to my website, aleniahealth.net. It, thank you. Yes, I said it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I do know my own name. Um, I'm on Facebook at Dr. Rachel. He- no, it's Alenia Health now. I don't know. I just change it. Look up Alenia Health or Dr. Rachel Hasselbrock. Either one. I'm on Instagram, but let's be honest, I'm actually never on Instagram. So if you follow me there, you're going to get like, I know, I just don't care. I know. You will. I don't right now. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I. (laughs) You get it. Fuck. Fucking. We'll talk. Social media. I don't like it. (laughs) Um. It's the world we live in. Start. Th- I know. <laughs> I'm such an. I'm such an old soul. I'm like, give me a paper book. I feel like, like I was the last CrossFit box to get on Instagram. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I've I been just. There. I don't know. People always like my life, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm just fucking <laughs> writing on my vision board. Like, no, we get a shit about that. Mm. Yeah, that's weird to me. You'd like, be surprised. I know, but then part of me is like, why don't you go make your own vision board? Stop looking at mine. I'm trying. <laughs> 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 so yeah, those three places. 
Okay, cool. would awesome. be good. Thanks yeah. for asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, appreciate but, you being on. Yeah, seriously. absolutely. Dude, thank, thank you for a having coffee with me the other day. Thank you. And then B, uh, entertaining the idea of being on the show today. Yeah, seriously. And, I appreciate and, you guys and, having me and being so deep and dope. <laughs> Thank you. Us. Thank you. For everybody out there in Feed Me, Fuel Me land, make sure you get out there and check out everything that Dr. Rachel has going on. And if you're interested in anything naturopathic, you now have a go-to resource. For sure. For sure. Resource. So thank you so much. For thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate awesome. it. You guys are awesome. You are appreciate awesome. It. No, you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're all fucking awesome. Even Max over there <laughs> crushed I mean, it. He's from Ohio. I I yeah, he's it's automatically so awesome. He's already <laughs> awesome right there, right? He's got to be. All right, guys. <laughs> do you have do you have something? No. Oh. <laughs> Until next time guys, feed me fuel me. <laughs>